Okay. I had to stop the video because on YouTube you can only have like certain length of videos. Because if it's too long it won't upload and everything. So um, I stopped to look at the time and I saw that I was over what I thought was the limit. So I stopped it and I'm like, oh man, I'm not even going to use it. And man, I got to do everything over. And I wanted it to be, I didn't want to like do like more than one take. I wanted it to be that what I said, what I gave you is what you got. Okay. But okay. So I looked up YouTube and I think it's going to be okay. It's loading right now. The first one so I had to unload the camera and I had a bunch of pictures and a bunch of videos on there. So it took a while and then I get distracted and watching Survivor and you know, so, but it's loading on YouTube. Hopefully it's going to load. The thing does say it can be longer than 15 minutes and the video was like at 16 minutes. So hopefully it's going to load because I don't have to redo everything I did the first time. But um, I knew I should have put a timer. I was like, I should put a timer so I can watch the time and not go too long. And yeah, me not go too long is like amazing. So anyways, we have one more person's questions left, um, which is Stephanie or Steph, as we like to call her now. <laughs> she knows what that means. Um she, her question, she has three questions. She's special. Three questions. Um, her first question is, have you always been cl as close to God as you are now? And um, the answer is no, <laughs> which I think is really good because as we get older and more mature and, and learn more lessons in life, I, I would hope, at least for me personally and, and perhaps for others too, that you're, you're constantly drawing closer to God. So I was brought up in church. I've been going to church since the Sunday after I was born. My mom took me to church and um, always grew up in church. And I was um, four, almost five, when I made that personal decision to accept Jesus as my Savior. And I can distinctly remember that moment when I stepped out of the pew and walked up to Pastor Hubbard and Betty Schmidt was called and she took me downstairs and I could even tell you what classroom and, and everything else. Very distinct memory um, when I decided to accept Jesus as my Savior. So, um, and then, you know, it's typical going into teen years, I rebelled a lot. I was going to say a little, but really it was a lot. You don't even know, but um, so... Definitely had my times where I would feel close to God and then not feel so close to God. And I'd do a bunch of really bad stuff and I'd get back on track and behave and be good and start paying attention in church and taking notes. And, um, you know, when I left home, it was still very natural for me to always go to church. I mean, you can ask Jim the very first thing, one of the very first things that when we got engaged and when I was moving my stuff over here to Galesburg where he was living, I was like, we had to find a church. We have to. You go to church. That's what you do. So, um, always been in church. Um, but I think anybody knows, anybody that has a real relationship with Jesus knows that it's really not about going to church. It's about that personal relationship. So church, church plays a part in it. I'm not saying it's bad to go to church, but it plays a large part and that's always been there. But no, I've certainly had times where I've wandered away and I have not been very close to God and didn't, I didn't rely on him for actually a lot of my really big life decisions. I just kind of did whatever I wanted to do because that's what I wanted to do. Never consulted him, never prayed about certain things and whatnot. Um, so I would actually see, you know, life is obviously a journey. We don't know when it's going to end, but as we continue on that path toward the end, we should be drawing closer and closer to God. And sometimes, as I now, huh, sometimes just when you think, okay, I'm there. No, no, things happen and you got to learn new lessons. And, and I've gone through a lot of that personally in this last year. Just when you think you're somewhere, God comes in. And, I mean, God had a whole, whole slew of new things that he wanted me to learn and to trust him in and everything else. And this last year has been a very, you know, very big journey to get even closer to him so and really until we get to heaven we're never completely a hundred percent close to Jesus because we always have that sin that's gonna try and tear us away so hopefully that answers your question I'm still on my journey I'm still trying to get to Jesus okay what inspired you to have six kids Ooh, this is my favorite questions um, I would have to say 
I have always wanted to have six kids. If you even, if you ask my dad, he will tell you, I mean, I can't tell you an exact age, but I was young. And I, I always said, I'm going to have six kids. I just always said that. So, um, I had some inspiration, you know, I babysat for a family and I started babysitting for them when I was in sixth grade and they only had two kids and then before I left high school, um, six years later, I they had five kids. So, and it was my favorite thing to do. I love to babysit, I love to take care of those kids. Those were my kids. I was pretty much their own exclusive babysitter. They, they never had any other babysitter besides me. And uh, I loved it, loved it when, I remember one time, um, Mark and Twyla went up to a Bulls game, and so I got to come, and I got to feed the kids supper, and I got to give them their bath, and then I got to put them to bed, and I was just like psyched. I'm like, yes, I get to do that, and get to stay late, and I mean, I just loved it. And so that's when I knew. I knew back then, I knew junior high, high school, and everything, that that I was going to have a lot of kids, and I always said six. I don't know why. I don't know why necessarily. I just always said six, and my dad was always like, well, Carmen, you need to think about your future. You need to think about if you want to go to college or, you know, anything else. And I'd be like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. You know, I, I don't know. I, I wasn't very good at thinking and planning. I just did. So um, I obviously, you know, I like to give God the credit because I think he instilled that in me, and I just, I was open to listening to what he wanted for me in terms of children because I would have to say every child we had I it, you know it felt right I felt like this is what God wants us to do some of them um, you know like with Angel we weren't really necessarily trying but it just kind of happened same thing happened with John we yeah we wanted a fourth one we didn't think it was gonna happen that quick but it did, So the, but there were other ones where I'm like, no, uh, this God is calling me to have another one. We are actively trying, and then, you know, wham, bam, thank you, bam, we all know what happened. So, um, but in general, all of them, I'm like, this is just what God wanted for my life. And I was open to that, and, and I was at peace with it. So that's, it makes it easier to have them six kids, having that peace, and knowing that this is exactly what God had planned for my life. And I... That's, that was my only motive and reason um, for having the kids. Because there's a lot of different reasons you can have kids. It's not that all of them are bad. But just for me, it's really all about God and what he has for my life. So, okay. Last but not least, because you need things to do besides sitting on my blog all day. Um, what? <laughs> this is, like, funny, I think. What is it about you that makes you so carefree Easy going and still seem to have it all together because yes, ladies and gentlemen, I have it all together. <laughs> I can't even say that without laughing. I don't know. Um, and I'm not always so carefree and easy going. You know, maybe Stephanie, you haven't seen that side of me yet, but um, I can get very focused and determined. I know I, I hear a lot, I've been told a lot that. Um, that I can seem uh, unapproachable, I can seem, um, what was the word, someone just said it to me recently that, I don't know, I, I get like this game face and people are like, oh, what's, what's, what's going on with Carmen, or like what is she ticked off about, or what's her, and it's, it's, I'm probably just focused on something, or yeah, maybe I'm, I don't know, I wear my emotions on my sleeves, I know that, I'm not very good at, you know, faking or, hey, what's going on? No, no, I'm gonna be like, hmm. When you see me on a Sunday and you're like, hey, how you doing? I'll be like, hmm, because it's been one of those mornings. So, um, not always. I mean, sometimes I'm like, oh, fine, you know, and yeah, I'm not really fine. I just wanna yell, it's horrible! But, um, I don't know, I've, I've really, I don't I think I think it's an interesting question because how, People perceive you is always different than how maybe you perceive yourself or different people can perceive different things. I've heard, I mean, when I was a waitress and, and once years ago, I, so, oh gosh, where were we at? Somebody said something like I was, you know, the crazy mom that came into high V. And, you know, it, for granted, take it for granted. No, that's not what I'm saying. Uh, I can't think of the word I want to use. Um, in hindsight, 
that was when I was going through a lot of postpartum depression at four children, ages five and under. And yeah, I, I probably was a mad woman going into high V all the time. I think when I first heard it, I was like, oh, I can't believe somebody said that about me. And, um, but in hindsight, yeah, I, I probably was this crazed woman probably yelling at her children and you know, it, it was just that phase of life that I was in, but that's just, that's just how it's perceived. So it doesn't mean that I was a bad person or, you know, that I never laughed or anything like that. I just, the people, how people perceive you are different than how you perceive yourself because I maybe would have thought that I didn't look that bad, but apparently I did. So, um, I know now in life, there's so much, I mean, my goodness, I am 34, but I feel like I have lived so much life. I have learned so many lessons. And because I got married and had children so young that I just dove head deep into adulthood, that um, I just had to learn all these lessons very quick, very young. And, and as I, I don't know, I guess we all have the same lessons to learn if I think about it. Just sometimes people get to do them when they're single and in college and it's expected and instead I was a mother and wife and you know I don't know don't get me thinking too deep here because I'll just go off on a little tangent which I already have carefree and easygoing I guess I kind of am I've learned to just loosen up and just be like well you know whatever it is what it is and what are you gonna do about it and let life take its course, let God have his plan, and I am a little bit of a control freak, a lot of a control freak, but I've learned in life that I'm not in control, that God is, so, and I certainly do not have it all together, I, that is just funny, I am most certainly a mess quite often, and you see how the camera is pointed to the wall behind me, yeah, that's for a reason, so, um, okay, I hope that answered all your questions. Uh, and I do hope to more consistently do the vlog thing. I, the person who I got the idea from, and I've seen it on a couple of different sites, but she, like, I'll have to do more research because she, like, has a, a weekly one, and it's always, like, a specific question. Like, I don't remember what, she's had a few, and they're specific questions. So if you ever have a question for me, then feel free to ask me whether I have a specific blog post or not. Just ask me if you want me to talk about something. Um, or if you just want me to shut up or be quiet, because the other one's not a nice one to say, um, then, then don't ask me any questions. So have a good day, and you finally got your first blog from the head zookeeper of the Peterson Family Zoo. Have a great day. Bye.